My friends, it is recursion that we were discussing, right? And the basics of recursion we have covered yesterday and we understood completely how recursion works. Now the thing is, with respect to recursion, what you have to understand it, it's basically a function calling itself. But the bigger question here is, how would you as a programmer be able to identify if at all a particular problem can be solved recursively or not? How do you identify that recursion can solve a problem? Well, for that, you have to first solve enough problems and through that, automatically your brain will get wired to think recursively. What do I mean, you may ask? See, even if your brain is not wired to think recursively, I can start slowly wiring it if you follow my three rules of recursion. What do you mean, sir, you might ask? Let us assume, my dear friend, I want to find the nth term in the Fibonacci series. I think everybody at least once have seen this series. This is nothing but the Fibonacci series where first digit or first number of the sequence is fixed as 1. Second is fixed as 1. But the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth has a relationship which is if you want the nth term of a Fibonacci number, you need the n minus 1 term and n minus 2 term, which means if you need a third term, you need the second and the first term. So how you get the second term is by adding the first and the second term together, which is what I'm just showing you. 1 plus 1 is 2. If you want 2, then uh, I mean, if you want 3, then 2 and 1 you have to add together, then you will get 3. If you need 5, 3 and 2 together you must add. If you need 8, 5 and 3 together you must add. If you need 13, 8 and 5 together you must add. Similarly, if you need 21, 13 and 8 together you must add, you will get 21 and this is how the sequence goes on. Now, let us assume I want to write a program where if the user tells n value, gives me the n value, what it means is in the Fibonacci series, he wants the nth term. It could be the 8th term, ninth term, 10th term, blah, 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 does not matter. He requires the nth term, okay? That's our duty. Now, this can be recursively solved. How, you may ask? How means it's very simple. You have to three, see if three rules are satisfied or three criteria are satisfied. What do you mean, you might ask? Again, 13 plus 21, like it goes. So, the first criteria is you must check if the problem given to you, can it be broken down into smaller problems? You have been given a problem. Can it be broken down into smaller problems is the first parameter you must check. The second parameter that you have to check is if in case this are the results dependent on each other. As you can see, is the result of the previous sub problem dependent on the next sub problem or is the sub problems output depend upon dependent upon the previous sub problem. So what about the third one? The third one is does it have a base condition because you know base condition is very 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 important for recursion and 100% we need it right. So I hope uh, till here whatever I have spoken is clear. Now does this Fibonacci problem have these three things? First of all, can it be broken down into a smaller problem? Yes, very simple. I need the third term or let us assume I need the fifth term. If I need the fifth term, first I need the fourth term and then I need the third term, which means this problem has been divided into two sub problems, which is I need the first the Fibonacci uh, of the, I need the fourth Fibonacci number. I need the third Fibonacci number. Fourth Fibonacci number is a problem on its own. Uh, third Fibonacci number is a problem in its own, which means a problem was broken down into smaller problems. This condition is satisfied. Would you agree with me? Similarly, are the results dependent on each other is the question. Yes. If I need the fifth term, it is dependent on the fourth term. If I need the fourth term, it is dependent on the third term. If I need, so dependency is certainly there. Of course, dependency is not on just the previous term. It is a previous term and the next term. n minus 1, n minus 2. Don't you think this is also checked? 100%, which is what I am also just showing. Does it have a base condition? See, if you need, uh, this is uh, 3, 6, 7th term is 13. If I need 7th, there is a dependency on 6th, on 5th. 
If I need the uh, fifth term, there is a dependency on the fourth term, third term. If I need the third term, there is a dependency on the second term, there is a dependency on the first term. But if I need the second term, is there a dependency? No, because second term is fixed as 1. If I want the first term, is there a dependency? No, first term is fixed as 1, which means this is the base of the Fibonacci sequence. There is a base condition, which means recursion can end somewhere. It will not infinitely carry on. Stack overflow is never going to happen. I hope what I am saying makes sense to you. So 100% this condition also satisfied. How many of you understood these three conditions? Put a yes in the chat. How many of you understood? This is the rule guys, you must always keep at the back of your mind. These rules you have to keep it at the back of your mind, always. I hope I am clear, okay. Now, now that I understood this, I can write it like this. For example, so recursion is possible. Now that you understood recursion is possible, next what you have to do is, try to always write the recursion relationship or what is mathematically called as a recurrence relationship that you must formulate. Like how we formulated for factorial yesterday, factorial of n is n into factorial of n minus 1. Like that I want a recurrence relationship here. How will you write it? Well, simple. Let us assume I want the fifth term of the Fibonacci sequence. If I need the fifth term, that is nothing but the fourth term plus the third term, that is what I am writing. Which means if I replace this with n, if I need the nth term in a Fibonacci sequence, then I need the n minus 1th term and I need the n minus 2th term. Would you agree with me? If this was a function called as Fibo of n, if I need Fibo of n, then first I must call Fibo of n minus 1 plus then I should call Fibo of n minus 2. Would you agree with this? This is only the recurrence relationship. How many of you understood this line properly? Put a yes in the chat. How many of you understood? What is meant by a recurrence relationship? Crystal clear? So see, now you are thinking recursively. Now you are thinking recursively. See, now let me just write code for this. Then we will trace the program. So if I take you to my editor, watch it. Let me just bring up my editor. Now in the editor, oh this you can demo all this and always keep a new one ready. Yeah, just go back, change that only. Yeah, no, no, other one. Yeah, remove this for all the function. Okay, I'll remove what is inside also. Remove that. Yeah, I hope I'm clear. See, now here what you must understand is, I'm going to create a static function. I'll call the static function as static and ultimately it must return a term for me, which is an integer, so int, and I'll call it as Fibo. And then it accepts an integer n, which is the nth term that it wants. So I'll go here. And here I'll write my Fibonacci uh, recurrence relationship, which is, I'll tell return. Return what? Fibo of n minus 1 plus Fibo of n minus 2. But, but, what is very important is, if I just do this, don't you think infinite recursion will happen? because there is no base condition. When should it stop calling itself? We did not define. And tell me, in a Fibonacci sequence, which is the base condition? These two. How will you write these two? See, very simple. N is nothing but the term number. So this is the fifth term, sixth term, seventh term, like this. This is the first term. If N is equal to one, it is one. If N is equal to two, it is two. Which means, I mean, N is equal to two, it is also one which means that is my base condition. See, I'll go there and put if in case n value is equal to 1, then I'll hit my base or 
n value is equal to 2, then also I have hit my base. In both these cases, if either it is 1 or 2, what should I return? What I should return is 1. I hope the base condition is also clear to you. Put a yes if you understood why I wrote the code this way. How many of you understood? Come on, come on. Did you understand yes or no? Good, good. You understood. Okay. Now, now you wrote recursion. Now there are two ways for you to uh, trace recursive programs. One is like I showed you yesterday in the stack segment, keep tracing the function calls, the stack frames and go. But for small problems it is okay. But as you can see, in every recursive call, there are two more calls happening, n minus 1, n minus 2. So if you start tracing the stack, it is going to be a very, very ugly way of understanding recursion. So the better way to understand recursion, especially when there are multiple recursive calls, is to make use of the recursion tree. If you make use of the recursion tree, tracing becomes very easy and for all the future programs, we are going to make use of the tree to trace the program. And how does the tree work? Let me show you, my dear friend. So this is my recurrence relationship. I will just keep it up for our reference. Now, if I were to trace this program, one tree will get generated. That tree will look something like this. Now, how did this tree come? That is what we are going to trace. Let us assume I want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fifth Fibonacci term I want. So, 5 should be my output. So, I will call Fibo. Go to the code. In the code, I will just go down and I will just call Fibo. System.out.println. Fibo of 5 I will tell. Fibo of 5. That This is what we are doing. Now, see how the logic works. Okay. So, you said Fibo of 5. So, I am just starting the trace. First you called Fibonacci function. First time 5 you passed. Now what will happen? It will go there. It will check if n is equal to 1 or 2. No, base condition is not satisfied. So I will come here. Forget about return. First see here. Fibonacci, if I want Fibo of 5, I need 5 minus 1, 4 and I need 5 minus 2, 3. Which one? Left to right. I mean right, uh, yeah correct. Left to right it will go. Which means, sorry, sometimes I also get confused with directions. Left to right it will go. In the left it is Fibonacci of 4, in the right it is Fibonacci of 3. So first Fibonacci of 4 you need to find out, which means Fibo of 5 minus 1, 4 gets called. See, that's what I am also showing. What gets called is Fibo of 4. Now Fibo of 4 is executing, which means again I will go check base condition. No, it is not 1 or 2, which means I will come here. Again for 4, I need 3, I need 2. First which will get called? 3. So see, Fibo of 3 gets called, which is what I am showing. Fibo of 3, come again. Are you uh, checking for the uh, uh, base condition? Yes. Is it the base condition? No. No means for Fibo of 3, I need 2 and I need 1. Which will get called first? 2. Which means, see, Fibo of 2 gets called. That is what I am also showing. Now, Fibo of 2 gets called. I will go there. N is 2. Check the base condition. Is N1 or N2? Yes, N is 2. Which means you have hit the base. Recursion stops. And what are you doing? Return 1. So see, that is why I have changed the color because this is the base condition. Now this will return 1. It will return 1. Okay. What did, what returned 1? This part. This is the part which returned 1. Now for Fibonacci of 3, you needed Fibonacci of 2, which is this part. Now comes this part, which is you need Fibonacci of 1. So see, Fibo of 1 gets called. Now, this is also a base condition, which means recursion will stop. And what I am going to return is 1. This returned 1, this returned 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, which is what Fibonacci of 3 will return. Hope you are able to think. Fibonacci of 3 will return 2. Now, it will return it to whom? Fibonacci of 4. But Fibonacci of 3, Fibonacci of 4 has. But it needs Fibonacci of 2 also which means now Fibonacci of 2 will execute, which is this part of Fibonacci of 4. Then this is base condition, it will return 1. 2 plus 1 is 3, that 3 is what Fibo of 4 will return to Fibo of 5. But again, that was Fibo of 4, but Fibo of 5 needs Fibo of uh, 2 also, uh, uh, Fibo of 3 also, which means now this part executes for Fibo of 5, which means Fibo of 3 gets called. For 3, you need 2, you need 1. First 2 gets called. 
2 is the base condition it will return 1 then it will call fibo of 1 fibo of 1 is the base condition so it will return 1 1 plus 1 is 2 fibo of 3 will return 2 to fibo of 5 3 plus 2 is 5 and that 5 is what fibo of 5 will return which you are printing and the fifth term is 1 2 3 4 5 is nothing but 5 how many of you understood how this recursion tree works put a yes if you understood it with crystal clear clarity now imagine if this I traced on the stack it would have you would have understood but you would have not got this clarity of how it works and see guys technically the end of a tree where there are no more branchings happening is technically called as a leaf and if you look at the actual tree also the leaf is like the end point of the tree that is where the tree you can say stops would you agree so uh, usually all these trees they are they are inverted trees which means if you uproot a tree and you invert it from root it starts from the root it starts a root is usually underground you flip the tree upside down from root you start and you keep tracing the tree down the end points of the tree are called as leaves these are all leaves of your recursion tree and you will notice by default the leaves of a recursion tree will always and always be your base condition I hope you're able to think my dear friends so successfully you have implemented recursion for Fibonacci you have understood the recursion tree you understood why this problem can be recursively solved because number one it can be broken down into smaller sub problems number two the outputs are dependent on each other dependent on the previous output and also most importantly they have base conditions use my three rules easily you'll be able to spot recursive algorithms anyways let's execute and check it out so uh, you make that as FIBO of uh, 3, 6, 7, you make it as, just make that as 7. <clears throat> okay, compile. No issues, execute. Works. Okay, guys, congratulations on learning recursion of uh, Fibonacci numbers. But uh, I mean, just imagine if uh, you can, there are many people, I'm, I'm sure even in some college, uh, uh, you know, external papers, also these questions will be asked. I'm sure there will be some computer science students in this classroom also would have by hearted this code and gone, not knowing why the hell you are writing the code the way you are writing. What is the principles of recursion? Why does this even work? What is the thinking behind it? But I hope none of you suffer from that. And by the end of this, your clarity on recursion is going to be on a different level altogether. If you just explain like this to a programmer, uh, sorry, not to a programmer, yes, a programmer only, but who is uh, taking your interview is also a programmer, definitely they will be impressed because this shows that you have clarity of concept and it is not just some by-hearting that you have done.